spanning sets and linear independence. <clears throat> Three things here that we want to consider. Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, two really. Uh, one is uh, just uh, preliminary, and that is uh, the preliminary is the linear combination. Uh, we've talked about that before. We'll just make mention of it here. Um, that is necessary as we talk about spanning sets and also linearly independence. <clears throat> um, and, and so the three things, linear uh, combination, spanning sets, and linearly independence. The goal is eventually for the next section is to build a concept for a basis of a vector space. So uh, a word on the linear combination. Since we've talked about it before, let's just go ahead and um, and look at it. Here we want to be able to determine whether or not this uh, vector v can be written as a linear combination of of the vectors in S. S contains S1 and S2. So um, what we want to be able to to see is V can be expressed as a linear combination of S1 and S2 if there exists scalars. Since we have two vectors, we need two scalars. I'm going to use C1. In, in my notes here, I've used K, K1, K2, K3, that kind of thing, but I kind of like C1, C2, and C3. Uh, if there exists scalars, C1 and C2 such that <clears throat> C1 times S1 plus C2 times S2 is equal to V. So so the, the, the capstone here is is actually can we find two scalars? Um, and since I put the answer here, the scalars would be here, these two guys. But we have to do the work uh, first, right? So I have C1 times S1. S1 is 1, 2, negative 2, plus C sub 2 times S sub 2, and that's 2, negative 1, and 1 that's equal to V and V is negative 2 negative 6 and 6 now what this gives you and see how the, the vectors naturally want to stand up that's their natural natural phenomena is to stand We're going to write this as a matrix. We have a system. So we're going to solve it in that regard. Life would be a whole lot better if I could write. <laughs> so you see that I have it here. And in your graphing calculator, um, you put that in, that reduces, l l let's interpret that, right? So once we get this, what does that mean? That means that that 1 here is 1 times C sub 1. That's equal to negative 14 over 5. And this is 1 times C sub 2 is equal to 2 over 5. So the the two scalars that we need there um, is the negative 14 over 5 and the 2 over 5. Thus, we can write V as a 
linear combination of here this is negative 14 over 5 times s sub 1 plus 2 over 5 times s sub 2 so uh, linear combination is something that we talked about in a, in a section or two before so you should be good to go there matter of fact I think we introduced the chapter with linear combination now let's move on to spanning sets and what does that mean here the um, the definition let uh, capital S be a non-empty subset of a uh, vector space V then the subspace remember we talked a bit about the subspace before then the subspace that is formed of all linear combinations that's why it was necessary to talk about linear combinations there the, the subspace formed of all linear combinations of the vectors in S is called the span of S and so if S is written here where they just actually claim vectors right what does S look like then we denote uh, the span of S as the span of those vectors or the span of S. Now if you've kind of uh, uh, thought that linear combination has something to do with all of this you're exactly right. Uh, a set spans a space or a subspace if we can write any arbitrary vector and that's the key being able to write any arbitrary vector in the space as a linear combination of the given uh, vectors. So uh, that is our goal so I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna kinda go the long way for the first problem but then after that um, I will just uh, work the problem with the shortcut the long version is so that you can see everything that's going on and after you get it you don't have to do all that but you understand so determine whether the the set S spans R2. If the set does not span R2, uh, then uh, give a geometric description of the subspace that it does span. <clears throat> so here's the argument. Now notice we have two vectors. Uh, that's called V sub 1 and V sub 2. So these vectors are in the big set of R2. Now S here is the question is does it span R2? Um, the idea of span is is it possible that these two vectors can be written as linear combinations to give you all vectors in R2. That's what that means. Okay so here's the argument. I'm going to write it out here but here but thereafter we won't. S spans <coughs> R2 if we can write any arbitrary and, and that's probably redundant in terms of any and, and arbitrary vector I'm going to call it B as a linear combination of the vectors in S. So here let let B since we're in the two space so B looks like B sub 1 and B sub 2 
it's some vector in R2. To write B as a linear combination, we must be able to find scalars so it's just a mimicking of the definition for linear combination scalars I'm going to use C sub 1 and C sub 2 such that C1 times V1 coming up here plus C sub 2 times V sub 2 is equal to B now this looks like C sub 1 times V sub 1 V sub 1 is 2 negative 1 plus C sub 2 is or V sub 2 excuse me V sub 2 is negative 1 1 that's equal to this arbitrary vector V1 V2 now for the matrix that looks like 2 negative 1 negative 1 1 and then B sub 1 and B sub 2 now it is it is difficult to solve this because we don't know what B1 and B2 are because they're arbitrary so since we have the equivalence theorem the equivalence theorem says that the the system AX equal to B has the unique solution and that's equivalent to the the system the homogeneous system AX equal to zero um, uh, having the trivial solution so we'll use that so here what that simply means is that that we can just solve this 2 negative 1 negative 1 1 here solving this guy we can solve that or that's equivalent to the determinant not being zero so we have several things in that equivalence theorem you can just pick one equivalence um, and 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 forgive me I, I did not state the equivalence theorem I will have to put that up mercy mercy on me uh, that I don't and I had a mind to to bring the slide up for that and I just forgot I'm so sorry um, but listen to me I'm telling you that uh, the homogeneous system well here the non-homogeneous system AX equal to B has the unique solution is equivalent to AX equal to zero having the trivial solution that is that we get all the values of zero and that's equivalent to the determinant of a not equal to zero that's equivalent to a inverse
this. Those are about the ones that we, we typically use. Now, check this out. This guy right here is AX equal to B. This is AX equal to 0. And that's the determinant, right? So, I can just pick one equivalence from here to there. Or, from over there to over here. I can just use one. So, that's why I already had here that the determinant um, is equal to 1 is not equal to 0 which means then that what you were looking for that AX equal to B has the unique solution AX equal to B has the unique solution for any B what B? even that B right there these B's <laughs> I tell you, dry humor is the best. So, so because of that, um, uh, the the system is is unique. Um, we conclude that uh, S spans R two. Now, if if we got, um, oh yeah, when you solve this system, you want to, you know, you want to get, and, and you do. We get. 1, 0, 0, 1, and then 0, 0, right? And so that that gives us the trivial solution. Um, here, we started with C, so C sub 1 is 0, and C sub 2 is 0. Or you can just do the determinant, and um, you don't get 0. So we conclude that S spans R2. Okay. So I went all the way around the world with that one. For the next problems, I'm just going to go right to it. They come in, they ask this other stuff, like this, you know, if it doesn't span, you have to determine if S spans a point, a line, or a plane, you know, what? Where did that come from, right? Okay, so Is weird. The screen just shifted. So it's not picking up the whole screen. never seen that before huh that's the weirdest thing I'm just gonna maybe pull this over a little bit Well, well, maybe you can, maybe you can see the whole thing now. Determine whether the the set uh, S spans R two. Uh, if the set does not span R two, then give a geometric uh, description of the uh, subspace that it does span. Okay, um, I I do these two, and then we'll stop and see if I can adjust the screen. So. Um, so for for this one, uh, the argument is still the same. Um, we want to be able to um, want to be able to write
an arbitrary vector B as let's give these some names V sub 1, V sub 2, and V sub 3 so we'll be able to say that B is equal to C1 times V sub 1 plus C sub 2 times V sub 2 plus C sub 3 times V sub 3 for scalars C1, C2, and C3 that must be determined. Well, so what happens is when you write that system out, we have this C sub 1 times the V sub 1, 1, 8, plus C sub 2 times V sub 2, negative 3, negative 24, plus C sub 3 times 7, 56 here this is equal to to B and we said that that's sufficient to solve him for the homogeneous system well well when you do that that gives you this system here and so in your graph and calculator you plug that in and I did that there and that gave me this now now what that says is that um, it's impossible um, to to find C1 C2 and C3 from this I can't um, such that to make this equation hold because of all these zeros here that's what throws us off Right, and and the system looks lopsided. There, there are three vectors, but uh, they're only in the two space. <laughs> so, so anytime you have uh, zeros in an entire row, then um, you will not have um, a, 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 um, the set to span. So, so S because of how this system looks right s does not span r2 now the question we know that it doesn't span but is s a line or is it a point that that's the uh, that's the question now in order for me to determine that you could do a couple of things. Uh, you can actually uh, take these uh, three points and you can graph them. But they, the numbers are so big. So, um, you know, I do everything by hand because I'm just old fashioned. You, you can use a, a electric grid grid and put those in. And, and you will see that um, when you connect those three dots, they are a line. Um, now, here's, here's what I did to determine. Um, um, if it's a line or a point, I took the um, the vectors. You know, the vectors naturally want to stand up. See, this is one eight. See how it stands up, and, and likewise. But to determine the geometric description, we have to kind of break that rule. And so, what I did was I put these vectors in the graphing calculator as as rows so 1 8 right is there you know that's being set to equal 0 that's where the 0 is over there and then uh, negative 3 negative 24 that kind of thing is is here and then 
that uh, row is there. Then I reduce that uh, row reduce echelon form on the calculator. Look, it just gave me a line. It just gave me a line. It just gave me uh, some kind of, of line um, in terms of or, or here S is reduced to the line AX plus BY which is that X plus 8Y And you know that's equal to to some some value c whatever, but but this is fine. Um, the 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 emphasis is that this is a line, and that tells me that's a line. Okay. So uh, it's it's just one equation. So three equations have been reduced to one equation, and one equation. Uh, with two un with two unknowns um, is is said to be one value is dependent upon the other value. So we we get a linear uh, progression. We get a straight line. So let's do this one, and then I'm going to log off and see if I can fix fix my screen. Okay, so we look at, at this one, and um, here with the same question, um, uh, uh, does this set S, does it span, here does it span R3, um, because each vector is a three-tuple, right? So, th so the argument is, can rewrite c sub 1 say this is v sub 1 v sub 2 times v sub 1 plus c sub 2 times v sub 2 equal to some arbitrary vector in R3. So now what this looks like is the C sub 1 times the first vector negative 2 6 0 and I said that I would just work out the first problem and just do everything the shortcut well huh? it's like I don't I don't have I don't even know how to do the shortcut. <laughs> okay this is equal to this B sub 1 V sub 2, V sub 3. So, so it's equivalent to solving negative 2, 6, 0, 4, 7, 1. Then here we solve this. And that's what I do here. And in the graphing calculator when you reduce that you end up um, with you know solving this guy what you need is a value for c sub 1 and a value for c sub 2 And so, so here, so what we need is
a value for C1 here namely to be 0 and C sub 2 to equal 0 but what's unfortunate is that that uh, cannot produce B sub 3 because look I get 0 there so okay I only get values for C1 and C2 to be 0 and, and that would be fine for linearly independence um, but is 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 not sufficient to produce an arbitrary vector uh, B uh, here um, because uh, and, and I have a theorem that that's going to show you in, in just a, a, a little bit that in R3 in order to have vectors that span R3 we we need three vectors <laughs> and which is the only way that I'm, I'm able to produce the the coordinates of the vector. If it's R4 then I need four vectors. If it's R2 then I need two vectors. So so here in R3 they only give me two vectors. Well I'm, I'm one less in the whole. So I mean from the bat this was not going to work. Um, now the, the cool thing is that um, these vectors do not span R3 but the question is um, are they a plane or do they represent a line or is it a point and and so here the the result says it's the plane now why is that well you could take the, the two points you can graph them and you'll see I didn't do that um, what I did was uh, you can take uh, these two points and uh, uh, and you can can write them in in your graphing calculator uh, as the the rows uh, as such as negative two six zero four seven one and then reduce I didn't do that I just kept everything uh, here and just looked at that and and what that tells me is that uh, I do have a one here a leading one and I have a leading one there those two leading ones represent uh, these two vectors v1 and v2 and that tells me that these two vectors stand alone they are they are independent um, and and thus um, uh, where they plot and what they form uh, is a plane um, uh, the question is uh, how come it's not a line it would have to be a line if if you got you know for this setup it would have to be a line if all I had was one zero 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 that that would only represent because I know it, it looks like one zero but it's actually is actually one zero zero which is representing the column is representing the vector so so what that tells me is that um, is that if it was only one um, but it's not if it was only if it was only one it, it would be a a, a a line and then there could be even an argument you know for a point um, um, because it will only be one point um, in that regard um, but but I get two points so are those two points a line or uh, are they a plane they would be a line if if the two points were um, were linearly were, were scalar multiples of each other um, um, and, and so they are an extension they're just scalars of uh, of, of one of the other um, but here since I have 
the two ones here, these two uh, points, uh, they graph uh, their own space. And when you connect them together, that space is indeed a plane. So I hope, hope that's fine. Um, again, these additional questions uh, are even new to me because uh, all we've been studying for years is that um, does the set span uh, or does it not? You know, the question of is, is it a point or a line or, or, or plane is interesting. Uh, well, uh, let me stop there and see if I can fix uh, uh, this screen, the reason why it jumped over. And then we'll come back and look at uh, linearly independence. Thank you.